times you feel unworthy or you, you struggle with believing that your destiny is still on, when that is the very moment you remind yourself and the devil, I've been declared righteous. This is what's happening at The Rock. Grace and peace, Freedom family and friends. These are your announcements. Join Womax as they kickstart breast cancer awareness. Be on the lookout for their fax table, which will be located in the foyer and hospitality will be given ribbons. And on Sunday, October 31st, join them on Pink Out Sunday by wearing your choice of pink attire. And as part of our Pink Out celebration on October 31st, Dr. Hart Ramsey from Northview Christian Church will be our guest speaker. Freedom Rock is looking for a bass guitarist, an organist, a keyboardist, and a guitarist to add to their music staff for Sunday worship services and additional church services. For all who are interested, please send a letter of interest to the cathedral's email, which is freedomrock at frcfc.org. Or you can email the Minister of Music, Roderick Fox, at rfoxmom at frcfc.org. Isaiah 1 and 17 College Prep Ministry will meet every first Monday at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom. Elder-elect Tommy Winston is the Connection Team Leader. The Ministry of Care will meet every fourth Monday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Elder Cedric Dubos is the Connection Team Leader. So if you have a birthday, an anniversary, or you just want to give someone a shout out, email us at freedomrock at frcfc.org. These have been your announcements. We ask you to keep all announcements in mind and be reminded that Freedom Rock Cathedral is locally committed and globally commissioned. Grace and peace, Freedom Rock Cathedral. We thank God for your presence here on today. Listen, we're getting ready to have an amazing presentation come before you today. We're getting ready to have an intimate conversation regarding breast cancer awareness from some amazing women in the body of Freedom Rock. We ask that you not only like, share, and comment on today, we ask that you also question. Place your questions in the chat. Let us know. We're going to be monitoring the chat to see if we can provide relevant answers to any questions you have so that we can begin to see this horrific disease dissipate in the earth because we know that the God we love is a God of healing and a God of wholeness. We're getting ready now to go directly to our conversations and we'll be right back with you. Grace and peace. Welcome Freedom Rock Cathedral tonight. I have some panel guests here with me and we want to welcome you to this intimate experience that we're gonna have tonight in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So who I have here with me tonight are a few ladies that have all of us together. We actually have about 119 years of medical experience. So can you give us a clap, a hand clap in that chat for that? Right here on this stage, you have over 119 years of medical experience. So with that being said, I want the ladies to introduce themselves and we're just gonna have a casual conversation on tonight in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We definitely want to recognize our survivors here that we have at Freedom Rock Cathedral and we want you to know that we are in your corner. God is speaking to us about grace, grace, grace and we have some survivors that have been graced with some awesome, awesome testimonies. So what I want to do tonight, I want to open up the chat and I want to take a few seconds just for you to go ahead on and share and go ahead on and like and comment for us and make sure that you're actually having that Go ahead on in your social media outlets and make that happen for us, okay? Can we just make that happen for us? All right, great. I'm glad that you're on our side tonight. So tonight, I'm going to actually open up the floor. And as I open up the floor, I'm going to let the ladies introduce themselves. And we have a great panel here for you tonight. And as I said, we have over 119 years experience. But we're going to let them introduce themselves tonight. And we're going to start here to my right with Miss Nellie. I'm Nellie Dubose. Hi, Ms. Nellie. So tell us a little bit about your background. 
Yes, I've, I've worked at Anderson Hospital right now, between Anderson and Riley Hospital, mm -hmm. 44 and a half years. I worked 10 years there. Wow. With the, with the mammogram. Whoa, clinic. you said 44 and a half years, Miss Nelly? Yes. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely amazing. So you actually had some experience at the imaging center, you say? That's right, I okay. worked at Riley's mammogram clinic for 10 years. Oh, wow, wow. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. So let's give Miss Nelly some hand claps in the chat, please. All right, next we have here Miss Alicia. Hi. Hi, Miss Alicia. <laughs> I'm Alicia Duvos, nurse practitioner, adult gerontology nurse practitioner. Um, I've been nursing for 20 years. I've been a nurse practitioner for awesome. six years. Um, a lot of nursing experience. First Lady and I used to nurse together. Yes, we did. <laughs> Some good old days. <laughs> yes, so we have a lot of experience and knowledge, and we're going to welcome you all just to get involved in the conversation. Yes, absolutely. And also, I just want to add right here, if you have any questions, that's why we wanted to have an expert here for you, a professional here, as well as our other panel guests. If you have any questions that you may have, go ahead on and feel free to comment in that chat box and let us know. And if it's something that we can't get right to, then we would definitely like for you to inbox or actually send us your email, and we would try to definitely get that important information back to you as we can. Now, this special lady here, now I'm just going to let you all know, for those of you who don't know, I want to let you all know that this is Bishop Hedgeman's granny, as we call her affectionately. <laughs> This is Granny, and we love her so, so much. Granny is a survivor, and I'm going to let her introduce herself and just tell us a little bit about herself here. Yes, my name is Pauline Key. All right. And I'm a 42-year survivor. Wow. Of breast cancer. Wow. Did y'all hear that? She said she is a breast cancer survivor for over 42 years years can we just pause awesome. right there and just give yes, god yes, some yes, praise yes, yes. oh my goodness so miss pauline key we're going to get back to you a little bit later in the session but we definitely want to come back to you and let you share some of your testimony with us regarding that 42 years of surviving and i'm glad god left you here because you are a great granny and you are awesome granny and we love you granny all right Thank so you. listen we're going to go here to my left and then i'll tell you a little bit about myself but we have an awesome lady here to the left miss jackie my name is Jackie Hyde, and I have uh, worked in several hospitals, uh, doctors' offices, and I have 35 years experience as a medical claims analyst. Awesome. That's 35 years as a medical claims analyst. Now, you may say to yourself, what is a medical claims analyst? Well, there are some important things that you need to know concerning your insurance, okay? Actually, breast cancer, breast cancer awareness, actually those types of terminologies that we use in the medical field, we understand that those insurance claims are very important. So, hey, listen, if you have some of those questions that you might need to get answers to, you have someone right here in the house at Freedom Rock Cathedral that can help you along the way with those kinds of questions. Now, just to tell you a little bit about me, and I'm not going to prolong the time, I am Michelle Hedgeman. I have about almost 20 years. I celebrate December 11th. 20 years of nursing experience. I have my um, RN. I actually started as an LPN and I matriculated at MCC in 05 and I actually graduated in 2007 from there and I actually matriculated at Western Governors University and I obtained my bachelor's there. So with, like I said, this panel that you have here before you, we have over 119 years of experience in the medical field. So what we want to do tonight, we want to just actually let you know about our theme, okay? So our theme for tonight, our concept for tonight is facts, fear, and faith. Somebody type that in the chat room for me. Somebody say too, facts, fear, and faith, okay? So tonight, along with this conversation, we're just going to talk about a few of those things tonight, okay? We're going to give you a few facts. We're not going to get real deep into it. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to inbox us or email us and let us know. But other than that, we're just going to give some time in a few minutes for Miss Alicia Dubo to give us just some of those facts. And what we actually are going to do as well, we want you all to know that there are some myths out there, okay? We want to be those that bust those myths out there for you, okay, so that you'll actually know what's true 
and what's not true concerning your health. Okay, so we're going to actually turn it over to Miss Alicia Dubose, and she's just going to actually give us a few, a, a few facts here, a little actual medical information, and we're just going to open the floor to her. Miss Alicia? All right, so breast cancer. So breast cancer um, is a disease in which malignant cells form in the breast tissue. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. Wow. No one mm. knows the exact causes of breast cancer, yes. but what is known is that breast cancer is always caused by damaged cells to the DNA. Oh, wow. So how and why the DNA is damaged is unknown. Mm. They've done a lot of research, but it's still unknown the cause of breast cancer. Wow. Um, some risk factors, and these are some risk factors that we cannot change. So our age, okay. we cannot change that, so that is a risk fa factor. Two out of three women with invasive cancer are diagnosed after age 55. Wow, stop right there, Miss Alicia. You said two out of three women. Mm -hmm. So on this stage, you have five women. So it says two out of three. So let's mm -hmm. say one, two, three. Two out of three women. Let's make that real known. Okay, so go back to what you were saying there, Alicia. With age, two out of three women with invasive um, cancer are diagnosed after age 55. Wow. Race, so it's, race is a risk factor, but it's something we wow. can't change. Yes. Um, in women under 45, breast cancer is more common in African-American women. So overall, black women are more likely to die of mm. breast cancer. Wow. Wow. Mm. wow. 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 That is mm. something there. So yes. I tell you, you know, thinking about that, we have lost so many people um, along the way during this journey. Um, we're still waiting in hopes for a cure. But as many of you know, there are a lot of funds that are driven behind Breast Cancer and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But we have yet to find a cure. So that's where faith comes in. Because as believers, we need to remember that even though we may not have a cure, we know the ultimate healer. Amen. Amen. We Amen. know the one that yes. rests and he sits on the right hand side yes. of the Lord and he is yes. our biggest intercessor. Thank you, so Lord. we know that yes. during these challenging times when we're faced with such, as Minister Winston said earlier, a horrific disease. You know, so many women hear that word and it's almost as if they accept death right then in that moment but we here at freedom rock cathedral know that we operate in faith yes. all right yes. we yes. use yes. the we gift do. of faith and we yes. understand that our faith goes before us yes, amen? amen amen so with that being said ladies alicia let's dive in here let's look at some more of these facts we talked about the facts here but let's look at some of the myths why don't you go ahead on and just kind of talk about that for a minute so we're going to actually try to find here, y'all just be patient with us as we find some of these myths, because when we're actually looking at those, we want to be real specific on how we need to know the truth. We need to know facts. That's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about facts, but now we're going to address some of those myths. Go ahead for me, Ms. Alicia. Okay. So um, just say doing your self-breast exam, if you find a lump, just because you find a lump, it doesn't mean you have breast cancer. Oh, However, wow. you still need to get right. that investigated. Oh, wow. Um, like I said, finding a lump doesn't always mean you have breast cancer. Only a small percentage of lumps turn out to be cancerous. Oh, wow. So when you're doing that's your right. self-breast exam, if you feel something that's abnormal, hey, call your PCP um, and just say, hey, I need to get checked out. And then they will do what they need to do and then send you to have maybe a mammogram, an ultrasound, or x-ray, but right. we'll, I know we'll get to that. Yes. Right. But that is one myth. Um, another one is that men cannot get breast cancer. That is a right. myth. Men can get breast cancer. Okay, say that a little bit louder. Yes. Yes. Men right. can get breast men cancer. Men can get breast cancer. Wow. Yes. And it's estimated that approximately 21,000 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer and die. Oh wow. my goodness, wow. that is mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. Wow, so mm -hmm. men can get breast cancer. So men, I need you to listen up. We know that you might have heard that this is a night for breast cancer awareness, but we need you to be tuned in. Now, Ms. Nellie, I just want to stop right there when she talked about the imaging, because you had those 10 years at the imaging center, at the Riley Center. Yes. So tell us a little bit about some of your experiences, like those experiences that you had with patients and those things that you might have had to do when you actually was taking them back and to get that mammogram done. Yeah, I had to interact with a lot of the women mm -hmm. on different levels. I would check them in, and then I would 
interact with them and they would tell me they were so afraid and they were yes. so scared that I, everyone probably thought when they came in mm -hmm. that they were going to have breast cancer. Yeah. But I would tell them it don't always come out that way. Yes. That, you know, uh, first, sometimes when you have your first mammogram, they have nothing to look back on. So mm -hmm. they may get extra views or they may get an ultrasound. Okay. And someone would be upset and nervous about that. Even come in there crying sometimes. Oh, my goodness. I would have to just kind of minister to them yes. in that area. And so I, just, I developed a lot of relationship with yes. a lot of the women. Yes. So every year they would come back and we would chat and then they'd go through some stuff and, and then it would be okay. And yes. I had several women that would always say to me, I know I'm going to have it because my mom had it. Yes. And I had several that did say that, and it did end up. But just the good thing about that, they went through the, the, the treatments and everything. Yes. And as I saw one of them last week, she told me that it was her 11th year of being a survivor. Wow. So just interacting with all wow. these different women and getting relationship. It meant a lot to me, I and bet. it did because I didn't know why I was in that particular yes. job because it just kind of, my boss wanted me to do it and work there, and as I began to work with the women, I realized what God had me there for, mm -hmm. to be there for, yes. and assess it with them and just kind of work yeah. through it and talk with them and so get awesome. them through that. So yes. it, it has been a, a, it meant a lot to me to work with those ladies. Absolutely. And, uh, I and worked when Jackie came in. Yes, I was just about to get to Miss Jackie because Miss Jackie has shared in the past with me, um, although she has that medical claims analysis experience, she shared in the past with me about her first experience. Miss Jackie, you want to tell us a little bit about that when you met Miss Nelly? I sure will. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I'm just a person that I don't like to really go to the doctor anyway. So would that be my first time to have a mammogram? Of course, I'm nervous. I'm a wreck, I'm thinking all these things, you know, what if I have it, why am I, first of all, I was wondering why I was going at the age I was going, because as I know, of course I know, there was no one in my family that had a wow. history of it, so I was wow. in my wow. late 30s when I was sent to have one, mm. oh, wow. and there was Miss Nelly, of course, <laughs> encouraging me, and just, uh, just praying for me right yes. there, and just, just just interceding on my behalf yes. because I was just about to fall apart. So did that actually help you with that her That made me feel so much better. And wow. she just kept telling me that it was going to be all right, that wow. everything was going to be all right. And that was an experience for the first time that it went on with me throughout the years after that that I had to go yeah. to have one. And, wow. it, and she gave me that comfort, gave me that ease, yes. and I felt so much, so much better. So just to know that there's someone there that, that encourages you, that cares about you, right. and that lifts you up in that experience because that could, it could be traumatic. And, yes, I, and I was yes. not even a person that had it in my family history. Yeah. So if I was that nervous, you can imagine what someone would be if they had it as family right. history. Yes. And I just thank God for it. It was well, just a we blessing. we thank God for Miss Nelly. Amen. Yes, <laughs> now, we're gonna talk a little bit about this faith here, this faith factor, okay? And we're gonna turn to Miss Pauline. Miss Pauline, I just want to ask you just a few questions about your testimony about being a survivor for 42 years. When you first got that call, actually tell us a little bit how that made you feel when you first got that call. When I first got the call, it really didn't dawn on me. Mm -hmm. I was not afraid. Wow. For one thing, I put my trust in Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. And I know that's what saved you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I had a praying mother yes. in law. Oh, and a wow. praying husband. Wow. I was coded. Yes. Oh, wow. But they went and prayed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I prayed. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the good Lord just saved me. He saved you. Yes. 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 Wow. So I can see, you know, it's very, it's very still real to you today. Yes. Even 42 years wow. of being awesome. a survivor, it's real to you. So, ladies, I want to say that you use this here as a living sacrifice. Someone that was actually here, mm. a good testimony, a yes. good praise report. Mm. Whose report are you going to believe? Yes. Yes. Miss Pauline said that she did not receive it mm. because we're talking about faith here. We're talking about what activates the realm yes. of faith. She said the moment she got the call, she said, I did not receive that. 
So we want to let you ladies know that at the moment some of you may be having that experience like you had here, like you heard, heard here tonight with Miss Pauline. So Miss Pauline, tell us a little bit about some of the things that your family went through. And we're going to let you take your time because we know it's not easy to talk about. And we know these are tears of joy. <laughs> They're not yeah. tears of sadness. So we're just going to let you take your time. So tell us a little bit about what your family went through with you actually having to go back and forth and get those treatments. Well, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was sick, real yeah. sick. Mom, yes. Lord. And I had to take the treatments for a year. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was bad yeah. back in that time. Ooh. Mm -hmm. You know, medical has improved so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had to take chemo oh, every three weeks for a whole wow. year. Wow. Whoa. And when I had my yearly evaluation, yes. I went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. and my oncologist told me, he said, Miss Key, I want to tell you this. You don't need me no more. Oh, oh Lord, Lord of God. God. And he walked out the room. And he walked out the room. Oh, yes. My. So but he I probably was didn't prayer. know. It was prayer. It was we know prayer. it was prayer. Yeah. It was oh, prayer. that is absolutely amazing. So at that time, what age were you about that time? When you were, you say you were about 39, I believe. In I was 39. But 39. when I went back, I was 40 for the evaluation. Oh, mm. Wow. So that was actually awesome. a full one year full span. Full year. Yes. Okay. Did you have any children that was actually, that you yes. had to continue to care for? I had an 18 year old. Wow. I had a 12 year old. Wow. And a one year old. Oh, wow. wow. That is just amazing. Wow. So can you imagine, you have the uh, testimony of someone mm. here that had three little children. There may be someone that's watching right now and you may be telling yourself, what if this happens to me and you have those children? You have a act of faith right here before you that you can survive and you can actually make that thing dry up in Jesus', Jesus name. Jesus. So Miss Pauline, we wanna thank you and we celebrate you and yes. we surely yes. appreciate yes. you on Lord tonight. God. But I just wanna ask you one more question. Could you tell about then, because we want to talk about the treatments versus then versus now. And I'm going to let Alicia look for some of the treatments in just a minute of today's treatments. But Miss Pauline, can you tell us a little bit about those treatments that you had over 40 something years ago? Yes, I was taking chemo, which I had to go in the vein. Wow. The one, anywhere they could find one. Yes. They would close up. Mm. And they had to go in all directions. How would it make you feel when you had mm. that radiation or chemo? Made me feel sick. You were sick, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Real sick. So wow, that actually actually required you to have some caregivers then, at that time when you had to have someone to take care of you during that time. Yes, my yes. mother-in-law oh, and my husband. Wow. And my oldest child. Yes. Oh wow, wow. Yes. That is awesome. Yes, they was right there with me. They took care of me, and they was a good support. Yes, that is awesome. So the, eventually, um, we know that you had to have some operations um, or anything like that. Did you did you actually have to have any operation? Let me I had know. one operation. You did? Yes. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I had a restroom removal. Okay, okay. And it was no pain. Okay. I had no pain with it. Oh, wow. wow. That is But wow. I was sick. God. Wow. And I was cold. Yes. So getting across to that to the ladies, because, you know, that can affect your body image. Being a woman, you know, having to have a part of your body removed from you. If you could at this time speak to someone now, Miss Pauline, about what it took for you to mentally jump that hurdle when you actually had to have that part of your body removed. What would you tell them tonight? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's Amen. just a part of the body you lost, yes. but it saved your life. But it saved your life. Glory, Glory to God. Yes. That is absolutely yes, yes, a phenomenal yes. testimony. Yes, yes. And God. I don't yes. want to keep going on because we will just actually have a little shot party Ooh, yes. right here. Yes, yes, but yes. we're going to move on right to Miss Alicia and ask Miss Alicia mm, about some yes. of those treatments on yes. today versus then. So they're kind of similar in what she was saying. But if you would, would you like to just tell the audience a little bit about some of those treatments that are available today? Mm -hmm. Some of the treatments that are available today, um, depending on the detection when they found the lump, mm -hmm. um, that's why early detection is key. Sometimes they can just do a lumpectomy, so they can just go in and right. remove okay. that that's certain right. area where it is cancerous if it has not metastasized. Okay. Again, early detection is key. So let's um, tell us a little bit about that metastasize, that word, that medical terminology there. What does that actually mean, Alicia? Metastasize is when the cancer has is spread yeah. over your body. Oh, a lot okay. of times when it's first mm -hmm. found, it's usually localized right. in a certain spot. Okay. Um, if it goes un, 
to take, what was to say, if you haven't gotten treatment, mm -hmm. it can metastasize up to your lymph yeah. nodes. It can metastasize anywhere in your body. So again, early detection yes. is key. Early detection. Um, and then there's a mastectomy that you can have where you have the total breast removed. Nowadays, people have implants. They can receive an implant. Oh, wow. So, they have breast um, bras now that has an implant in it, okay. so you can just put that bra on if you don't want to have that um, mastectomy, where you can just have that breast both looking, you know, the wow, same. Looking wow, looking the same, so you wouldn't mm -hmm. have that effect mm -hmm. as bad on your body image right. with that part being removed. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Jackie, with all the experience that you have in that insurance uh, department, did you ever run across some claims that were denied when they actually had to come across the actual payments? for delivery of those treatments. Because I want to tell you a quick little story here. I remember when I was doing hospice, I had several patients that had cancer. Right. And when they had that cancer, I remember distinctly holding this lady's hand and she was crying her eyes out. And it was because her husband could have received a treatment for cancer and he actually needed $5,000 per treatment. Mm -hmm. But the actual insurance would Ooh. not approve for right. that wow. actual aggressiveness right. Right. of those wow. types of treatments. Right. So with all of your years, Ms. Jackie, do you see or have you heard of those types of claims being denied? There are some. Well, first, if it's, if it's mostly if it's pre-existing. Okay. You know, a lot of insurance companies, are, they don't want to pay for things that they consider pre-existing. And sometimes when you start off with the insurance and you change jobs and you already had it, and that person may have had the cancer going into another job, going into another insurance. They don't want to cover pre-existing. And if you don't have pre-authorization, mm -hmm. which you have to get a pre-cert. Oh, wow. Uh, and have authorization to do the treatments. Uh, it could be a number of things that could cause them not to cover it. Okay, I see, I see. So, actually, to talk about, Alicia, just to go back to you, we actually have heard of the word remission. Um, what do you think about that word remission when you hear that? What, if you actually had a patient that you actually had to talk to about remission, what would be some of the things that you all would talk about? We would talk about with the remission, um, I would say still do your self breast exams. Okay. Um, still see your provider to have your clinical exams. Mm -hmm. Still follow up with your mammograms. Okay. Um, so that's Even, very important. Very important. Okay, so mm -hmm. we actually want to do just a little demo here. Now, I actually, with all the experience that we have, Miss um, Nellie has a lot of experience in the Imaging Center, and they actually put actual, uh, uh, actual machine that gets really close to your body, and they actually take the breast tissue and they put it in the machine. But what we have here for demonstration purposes, we actually have an actual breast tissue model and uh, Miss Alicia is just going to kind of, and I'm going to try to help as much as I can, but we're just actually going to try to demonstrate to you ladies um, before we wrap up about a good actual demonstration of how you can at home do this what is needed, early detection, okay? There are times in the shower when you can actually do your breast exam, self-breast examination. There's a lot of information that's available out there, but make sure you are checking your resources on what information you're actually utilizing, okay? Just don't go to Dr. Google. Make sure you're actually using those credential actual outlets that are available for us during these times, okay? So Miss Alicia, it's just gonna kind of show you how you would actually just kind of go in a circle of motion. Mm -hmm. And the actual pamphlet tells us, Miss Alicia, just start kind of in the center around the nipple, mm -hmm. and then you go around in circle of motions. So Miss Alicia's just demonstrated for you what you can actually do at home. Now, as you can see, she's taking those finger pads, okay? The actual finger padding of her fingers. So she's actually using that part. That's what the instructions tell us to do. It tells us to make sure that you're using those finger pads because you don't want to actually press too hard to where you actually miss the nodule, okay? And then, Miss Alicia, didn't it tell us that we actually need to go up I into the lymph do. nodes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And Miss Nelly, up. did you actually have to talk to some of your patients about that? I did. Yes. I did. I would talk to them and let them know that they would definitely have to not only the outer part, you would definitely mm -hmm. have to go underneath there. Underneath, oh, you want to to the yeah, window. and then you could lay down also wow. and let the breast lay it to the side oh. and begin to check like that too and not miss it because the, the nodules can go not out of the breast underneath. Oh, wow. Underneath your okay. arm and so all of that. 
played a part into awesome. self-checking also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ms. Nelly, for that. Ms. Alicia, thank you for that mm -hmm. quick demonstration. So, ladies, if you need more information about that demonstration, just go ahead on and feel free, like I said, to just actually email us or just type something <coughs> out in the chat. So, as we wrap up, we just want to make sure that you understand that we are actually utilizing faith in this hour. Bishop is actually speaking to us about grace. And we want you ladies to know that we here as a ministry, we want to make sure that every actual asset or every access that you have is available to you. I mean, look at the experience on this panel that you have right here in Freedom Rock Cathedral. Look at the actual testimonies that you actually have. And I'm sure it's many testimonies. So at this time, ladies, if you feel open to share that you are a survivor and how many years you've been a survivor, type that in the chat room. Let us know. We want to know and we want to hear about your personal experiences as well. So as we close up, Alicia, we didn't really hit real hard on the symptoms mm -hmm. of breast cancer that may be things that you need to look for when you're doing that early detection. What are some of the things that the ladies and the men, as we said, men can get breast cancer too. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those things, Miss Alicia, that we actually need to look for? So you need to look for, make sure you don't have any nipple tenderness. So you can press there on your nipple just to make sure it's not tender. Um, look at the, the skin texture. Um, if it looks like an orange peel, that is not good. Okay. When those pores are very large, because looking at you know your breasts, mm -hmm. so that's why you should do your self breast exams. But if you know those notice those pores being enlarged, looking like an orange peel, that is not good. Follow up with your primary um, provider. If you're just doing your exam and you find that lump, mm -hmm. follow up. Um, unexplained swelling, tenderness. Um, discharge from the nipple. Okay. That is key, especially mm -hmm. if it's blood or watery discharge, that is not good. Okay. But you know, if you're breastfeeding, you will have some yes. discharge then Don't for be women. Alarmed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, if you're having discharge from your nipple, please follow up with your provider. Yes. Okay. Those mm -hmm. are some symptoms, lady, um, ladies, on tonight that we wanted you to be aware of. And we just kind of wanted to talk about a few things tonight and just get those things in your hearing as to what to look for as it pertains to that awareness. So tonight, ladies, I just want to thank you all for being here. Ladies in the chat, those of you who are watching, just go ahead on and give us some hand claps as we close out tonight. We thank our survivor, yes. Miss Pauline yes. Key. Let's yes. just give her yes, a big hand. Thank you for being here and taking the time. And listen, Miss Pauline, I don't want to tell them that you're 21 years years old. I know you're 21. I know that's what you tell me. You're still 21. But just as a testament to your longevity and your survival story, let them, let them know out there just how beautiful you are, just exactly how you sitting here so well and you walked yourself up on this stage. Tell them how young you are, lady. I'm 18 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Pauline says she's 18 years old backwards, so y'all know what that means. I'm going to let yes. you do the math on that. So ladies, again, thank you, Miss Jackie. Thank you, Miss Nelly. Thank you, Miss Alicia. Thank you, Miss Pauline. Thank you, Freedom. Thank you, ladies who are here in our audience tonight. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for everything that you might have typed in the chat. We just want to say a big thank you and listen. We have some actual uh, pamphlets here in the cathedral, okay, in the foyer. So when you're coming in on Sunday and you're actually visiting, make sure you stop by our fax tables. We have some available uh, actual pamphlets and brochures out there available for you as well as some little goodies as well. So when you're coming in on Sunday on worship, make sure you stop by that table. And actually, if we actually will, we can have someone out there standing out there to answer any questions as well. But with the COVID protocol, we kind of want to limit that. So we don't want you to go looking for a person in particular, but there is a table out there for your disposal with a wealth of information about some of those things that we high pointed tonight. So as we close, I just want to actually just take the time to just say thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in Freedom Rock Cathedral on this Sunday. So ladies, y'all have a good night and y'all go ahead on and reach out to us if you're needed it. And we just want to say bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>
My God, what a powerful conversation. Listen, the Bible tells us that we overcome him. Who is him? The enemy. By the blood of the lamb and by the evidence of our testimony. We thank God for these powerful words that were shared on today. We would dare not leave without giving you an opportunity to accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It's the best decision you can make on this side of heaven. If you don't know Jesus, we ask that you please pray this prayer with us. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe by faith your word that you wrote, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead for my sins, then I am saved. By that confession, I decree now that I am the saved of God. If you prayed that prayer, we believe by faith that you're saved. Heaven is celebrating with you and so are we. Please remember, like, share, comment. Let us know how the word of God is ministering to your life and how it's changing you from inside and out. We thank you so much for your time here on today. God bless you.